prostitutes. Well, hello? It's easy to love those who love you. Even unbelievers can do that. He's sending you into the fire to help people get out and find truth in life. That's an awesome opportunity. Don't run the other way. Learn from Jonah's mistakes, right? Now look what it says. Go and say to the, come and learn a lesson how to obey me. The Rechabites do not drink wine to this day because their ancestor Jehonadab told them not to. But I have spoken to you again and again, and you refuse to obey me. How many times does God speak to us? And we just don't obey him. That's what he's trying to say here. There ain't no different <clears throat> back then, 4,000 years ago, than it is today. God speaks to us all the time. You know when God sends an opportunity to you. You already know. Yeah. And you refuse to obey me. How many? We say, well, I'm obedient. I go to church. That's not what obedience is talking about. You're not obedient because you come to church. No. You're obedient in the trials and the tests and the fire. The hard stuff. No. Believe me, it, it, this is actually easy than denying the flesh. How many churches are sitting in a Bible study after a hot day? It might seem hot, but that's a lot easier than saying no to your flesh when it wants to do something. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is easy compared to that, right? Amen. When you're not here. Right? Yep. Time after time I sent you prophets who told you, turn from your wicked ways and start doing things right. Every time I come up here and preach, it's like them, God telling you to turn from it and start doing things right. And you hear it time and time again. Don't think that it's not any different for you. When the Bible speaks to you, it's not me speaking to you, it's the Bible. God's speaking to you again and again and again, and you're not obeying Him. Turn from your wicked ways and start doing things right. Stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land I have given you. And to your ancestors. But you would not listen to me or obey me. The lesson from Israel's idolatry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened to them? They died in the mm -hmm. wilderness. They got sent into captivity. God loved them, but that's what he had to do. You see? What do you think he's going to do to you if you keep being disobedient? He's going to do the same thing to you. Because he loves you. And you're going to end up suffering down here. Because you won't obey. Okay. So is it any different? No. Time after time, I sent you the prophets who told you to turn from your wicked way and start doing things right. Stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here. So, do you want to live in peace here? What would be another god now to you? Your car, your house, people. That would be another god. You're worshiping that. Giving all your time and energy, devotion to that money. That's what it's talking about. Can I get an amen for amen. that? Amen. Look, I'm in the same boat as you. Amen. amen. There's things that I worship here in the earth and God's trying to pull them away from me. Amen. They're starting to cause more misery than joy. You know? Amen. I got, I'll be, I'll be, I got a nice beautiful Lincoln sitting in my driveway. Restored it totally. 97 Lincoln Mach 8. And I'm like, I can't wait to get rid of it. It takes more time to keep it up and polish it and make it look good than I want to give it. So now before I used to cherish it, now I can't stand it. It's only a hunk of iron. That, I can't take it with me. So now I want to get rid of it because it's just, it's a hindrance. Yes. I get in my 2005 um, Altima, drive it wherever I want, if somebody bumps into it, <laughs> Get a new one. I don't know. Did anybody did anybody open their door on it? <laughs> oh my god, I can't park. I gotta park like three miles away so somebody don't hit it. I'm not saying it's bad to have something new. No, I'm just saying you see what it does, or it ends up consuming you. I could care less, you know what I mean? About the other car getting dinged and dogged. 
<laughs> Bought my Lincoln when I used to get in it and drive it. My, I wouldn't even let my wife drive it. Nope, not getting in it, you're not driving. Don't, I would park. I don't care how far away so nobody come near it to scratch it because all the time and effort I put into it to rebuild it and restore it. So now I'm saying, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'll just leave it in the driveway. And then there's nothing, nobody can happen to it. <laughs> Unless somebody comes by and hits it. Yeah, well, you don't. I hit my friends. Yeah, unless the garbage can hits it when I take it out. <laughs> but I'm just using that example. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad because they got new cars. It's fine to have them. I'm just saying, when you compare it to worshiping God, what's more important to you? Because God's the one who gave you the new car, so That's you should right, just respect yeah. it and appreciate it. You know what I mean? I just happen to work on cars all the time, so they really don't do anything for me anymore. You know, when you've been working on cars for 35 years, the last thing you want to do is have to take care of another car. Yeah, right. But I take care of everybody else's. Yeah. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, there's nothing to get said. You can have a nice car. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't smash it, because then you're going to have to see me again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last time I saw you, you didn't have to do my car. Yeah, right? Well, if that happens to you, not your car now, it won't be. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you have to trust the body shop to fix it the right way. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. To bring it back to factory conditioning. Mm -hmm. Just an example. It could be anything. You know what I mean? New phone, new anything. Just don't let it take God. God don't have anything against you having nice things. He just doesn't want the nice things to have you. Don't think because you're poor that you're closer to God. No, you're just foolish. You just didn't do the right thing. All right. Here it is. Look at verse 17. This is what the Lord of God, uh, Israel, says. Because you refuse to listen to the answer... I will call, I will send upon Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I've threatened. The prophets told them time and time again to turn from it or you're going to get go into captivity. You're going to get into trouble. And they would not listen. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of years mm -hmm. of disobedience. God's, God was lenient. Everybody know God was cruel. No, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. He was telling them to turn, sending prophets. They were stoning the prophets and killing them and listening to false prophets saying, yeah, but it's going to be fine. Yeah. <sighs> and how could I bring that in today? You get up here and tell your preacher, come up to you and say, yup, just believe in Jesus and everything's going to be fine in your life. Sure. Don't worry about the sins. Don't worry about the party. And don't worry about all the sex. Don't worry about all that stuff. Heaven's your home. Heaven is going to be fine. That's just what the false prophets were telling the people. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. Just go worship in the temple. And do whatever you want. Heaven's fine. You read the Old Testament, right? Yeah. And they went for that because it appealed to their flesh. Yeah! Yeah. And believers do that all the time. Oh, I like that message. I'm saved by God's grace. And I can do whatever I want. Heaven's my home. Yeah! Amen? Amen. Same thing goes on today in Christianity. Yep. Scratch the itchy ears. Yep. But God won't... It said God, judgment's going to start. You know what's going to start? In God's house. Not out there. In God's house, judgment starts. So it says, you know, look at it says. Therefore, this is the Lord, because you refuse to listen and when I answer, I will send all the disasters I have threatened. Then Jeremiah turned to the Rechabites who were doing the right thing and living the way they were said they were going to live. Look what he said. You have obeyed your ancestor Jehonadab in every respect, following all his instructions. Therefore, this is what the Lord of Heaven's army, the God of Israel, says. Jehonadab, son of Rechab, will have all, will always have descendants who serve me. See, they got blessed. Look, 
being obedient down here, you will get blessed. Eventually, you will get blessed. But it's not in your timing. Mm -hmm. Just don't think you just don't be obedient to get blessed. Right. Be obedient because you love God. Amen. Not because you have to, because you love God and you want to. All right? right. Amen. Amen. All right, so that finishes the study. Now, what do you think this all what would be the topic? Does anybody know what the topic would be? Obedience. Unquestioned. To me it's obedience. faithfulness. Faithful, faithful obedience. obedience. Faith. That's what right. I said. Faith both and obedience. Both. I wrote that down last That's week. Right. Faithful obedience. That's faith. It's both. Faithful obedience. Exactly. <laughs> because what did what did he tell Abraham? Right. Abraham, he trusted God that counted him as righteous. He trusted God to put his son on the altar. Yep. He had faith enough to do that. Yep. Right. He obeyed it. His faith it created made obe. Look. Your faith will equal obedience. Mm -hmm. That's what it's trying to, that's what, the, 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 that's what it is. Faith equals obedience. Your faith in the Lord will show by your obedience to Him. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to close there. Thank you for letting me share Thank that. You. Yeah. Thank you. God is good, right? Brittany's going to come up and sing and we're going to close. Faith God is good. Obedience.